trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about here on Thanksgiving. I love thinking about and figuring out um, special episodes like holidays, the 4th of July, Christmas, Memorial Day, all the things. I'm, I fancy myself a creative and wanted to do something. Just was having a hard time, having a hard time. And then it came to me, came to me just a couple of minutes ago. My four-year-old son, Jack, I'm recording this on, on Friday before the week of Thanksgiving. And on Fridays, he gets to bring in a show, a show and share, show and share day at school. And this week, there's apparently a theme. Maybe it's always been that way. And this is the first time I'm noticing or the first time I've been informed about that. It's neither here nor there. But the item should begin with an O, letter O. I said, what What can I bring in? What, what starts with O? And it was, um, my brain wasn't necessarily all the way on, but started thinking about it. It's like, well, we can bring in an owl. We have a, a stuffed owl. We can bring in an ostrich. I don't think we have an ostrich. And then I thought, oh, we could bring in the number one because that starts with an O, obviously. You you know that. And we just, nothing was really sticking. And then it hit me. I'm like, here's what you're going to do, Jack. You're going to roll into your classroom this morning and you're just going to start start sharing your opinion about things. Be like, ah, you know what? These tables are on the wrong spot. I don't know why. We do recess at the time that we do it. I think that we should do it this way. You get the idea. So he comes in, guns blazing, uh, sharing his opinion with everybody. Now, he's four. I think that he could actually pull that off, but we will see. We'll probably just end up bringing the owl in. And I'm not going to follow up on it. So you'll just have to uh, let your imagination run wild on that one. Anyway, what's important about this is it made me think about, obviously, Thanksgiving coming up and what an incredible opportunity Thanksgiving family gatherings are, but particularly Thanksgiving is to tell your family members that you've maybe only interacted with on Facebook over the past year, just how incredibly dumb and wrong they are right to their faces. I mean... It's way, way too good of an opportunity to pass up. There's so much, so much great content for you to be covering and things you've been really thinking about and ruminating on, myself included. We've got Ukraine. We've got just woke stuff in general. That's been a big theme this year. We've got homelessness. Confident everybody's got thoughts on that. We've got the national debt. Maybe, maybe not got stupid Republicans. We've got stupid Democrats. We've got Middle East stuff going on, really terrible Middle East stuff going on. We've got really dumb college kids doing really dumb stuff. It's a long list. We've got tons of excellent cannon fodder to load up and fire it right at your loved ones. So too good of an opportunity to pass up. But as you know, discretion is oftentimes the better part of valor. So what does that mean? Well, it means normally that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should do it. And more often than not, deciding to hold your tongue or to not give them both barrels is the better way to go. Now, that being said, I don't know that we're nearly evolved enough to completely avoid letting our loved ones totally have it. But I propose a different approach. Please just hear me out on this one. You can simply go in guns a blazing and tip over the Thanksgiving table and smash the turkey and get in a fist fight or just at least a shouting match with loved ones. Or you could take a different approach. I, probably like you, I really hate when people are simply trying to win arguments. It's really clear to me. People just dig their heels in. We sort of get tunnel vision and we completely forget what the whole point of this thing was, which was really having a civil conversation and sharing ideas and interrogating those ideas, having a robust 
polite, respectful conversation slash debate. And it's the worst when people are disingenuous and enter into an interaction or a conversation simply trying to win. So bad faith conversations are the worst. Let's not do that. Let's not engage in that, please. Instead, let people figure out or try to help people figure it out for themselves. How do you do that, you ask? Well, you ask good questions and then you listen to the answers. That's an important thing. Another thing that I think is sometimes lost is that when you ask a question, it should, you ought to, you should listen to the answers that people give back to you. I know, I know, I know, I get it. You have most of the answers already. And you're excited to impose, I mean, share your special secret, valuable information with your family. But what what's going to happen when you open up the floodgates and share all this information all over them? Well, you run the risk of simply overwhelming them. Maybe, maybe they have no idea that some of this stuff is going on. And this is, in fact, the first time that they'll be hearing about it. So that's certainly an interesting thing, isn't it? You don't want to overwhelm them with your genius or your thoughts. You will fail. Should you do that, you will probably fail to change their mind. You'll probably do the opposite. Could simply cause them to retreat back into their position and not be open at all to hearing about what it is that you're thinking about and the things that you've spent time thinking about. And that's not a good thing. You don't want to do that. You're interested in persuading them to come around to your way of thinking, to your line of thought. And I think that that's probably a good thing because I trust that you are uh, somebody who's acting in good faith and is interested in making the world a better place. And that's the reason that you have the positions that you have. But of course, they probably feel the same way, which is amazing that people that you're related to, that you are related by blood to, can think so differently than you do. But it's the reality. We all have different experiences and it's an incredible thing. So instead of just trying to force or bulldoze over them with your ideas, plant seeds. Plant seeds in the form of questions and allow the other person to self-discover what you already know, also known as the truth. And that could be the key, could be your key to a civil and happy, and pleasant and wonderful Thanksgiving. If all else fails, instead of telling them to go F themselves, ask them if they'd like to go F themselves. It's a simple, subtle change, could make all the difference. And be grateful, for goodness sakes. Be grateful. It's gratitude. You know that. Be grateful for the beer and the wine. And of course, family. I hope that your Thanksgiving is is wonderful. I do encourage you to work hard to engage in civil discourse and to try and figure out and understand why it is that your loved ones think and feel the way that they do and to change your perspective and to contrast your perceived reality with their perceived reality and do that old thing of walk a mile in somebody else's shoes to try to understand why it is that they think that what that that way and again we do that by asking questions here's a simple one you could always say tell me more can you tell me more about that i don't think i totally understand what 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 you're saying can you tell me a little bit more tell me more t m m tell me more happy thanksgiving do your part by doing your best